Welcome back. Okay, we're finally ready to design a coordinate transformation T that balances our Gramians. Okay, so up until now, what we've done is we've taken this original system, uh, we've shown how those dynamics transform under a coordinate transformation from X to Z. We've also looked at how the Gramians, the controllability and observability Gramians change. So this is my controllability and observability Gramian in my original X coordinates, and they transform into these new hat Gramians in my Z coordinates according to, to this set of formulas. And now what we're trying to do, what Moore showed in 1981 and what we're going to do is we're going to design a very, very special T matrix so that we take our original controllability and observability Gramians and in these new T coordinates, in these hat coordinates, we're going to get them to be balanced, which means that they're equal and diagonal. And that's eventually, so in the next phase, we're going to use those balanced Gramians to chop off and truncate our, our huge high dimensional state and only pick the, the modes, the directions and state space that are most jointly controllable and observable, in this case, this big pink direction. And that'll allow us to get an input output model in terms of a much smaller state X that still captures most of the dynamics. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to essentially find this coordinate transformation. So we're going to find the coordinate transformation T so that in that transform coordinates, my new Gramians are going to be WC equals WO hat equals um, sigma. Now, sigma is kind of my go to notation for a diagonal matrix because of the singular value decomposition. Okay, so this is actually pretty related uh, to singular value decomposition, but this is just a diagonal matrix, and the entries of sigma go from biggest to smallest. So the first column of WC hat is the most controllable direction, most observable direction. The second one is uh, sigma is smaller, so the second column is the second most controllable and observable direction, and so on and so forth. Okay, go back to the uh, control boot camp and refresh yourself on what the, the Gramians mean physically because I'm assuming that you know that these Gramians essentially tell me what directions in state space are most controllable and observable. The columns of this literally tell me uh, in order what's the most to least controllable and observable directions in state space. Okay, okay good, uh, or really the columns of T. So this is what we want. And now what we're going to do is I'm just going to take a product of these two Gramians. I'm going to multiply them. So I'm going to do some math, and eventually we're going to come out to an expression that will allow me to solve for T uh, to get these Gramians. So first of all, let's just multiply these. WC hat times WO hat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this expression and this expression. So WC hat times WO hat is T inverse WC T minus star T star WOT. Sounds like a lot. Okay, let's write that out. That's equal to um, T inverse WC. Now, T inverse star times T star is the identity. So I'm not going to write those. I'm just going to write WO T. So I skipped a step here where this times this is the identity. So this times this, those middle matrices cancel out, and this is what I get. That's pretty nice. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in that we want these to both equal sigma. So I can basically say now this thing should equal sigma squared. That's, I'm just plugging this equals sigma into here and I get these equal sigma squared. This is really cool. Last step, okay? Left inverse by t. Left multiply by t to get rid of this t inverse and what I get is wc W-O-T equals T sigma squared. So this should look really familiar to you. This is the formula for the eigen decomposition. This is my big matrix. These are my eigen vectors. And these are my eigen values. And notice that the eigenvalues of this product will have to always be non-negative because this is sigma squared. So these could sometimes be zero, but they're never going to be negative. Okay? So this is a diagonal matrix of non-negative eigenvalues of the product WC times WO, and these are the eigenvectors. So this is kind of amazing. If I had, this is model reduction, so I have access to A, B, and C. If I had access to A, B, and C, I could build my controllability and observability Gramians in those original coordinates. 
And then what I do is I do a big eigen decomposition. Remember in MATLAB, this is super simple. It's just t comma sigma squared equals eig of w c w o. Okay, so it's like a one line MATLAB command to get t and sigma squared. Now I have that coordinate transformation that balances my Gramians, and I have the sigma that those balanced Gramians should equal. This is amazing. Okay, all we did was basically multiply two matrices and plug in what we want, and we came out at the eigen decomposition. This is the formula for the eigen decomposition. Hope everyone gets this. So if I had A, B, and C, I could compute these Gramians, I could compute their eigenvectors, and that is the coordinate transformation that balances my Gramians. Okay, that is almost the whole story. I'm going to tell you about the subtlety. The subtlety here is Okay, the subtlety is there are lots of t's. I can scale my eigenvectors. Let's say it that way. I can, and if I have an eigenvector and I multiply it by 2, it's still an eigenvector. So this t is not exactly unique. I could, I could do unit length columns of t, and that would be unique. I could kind of normalize the columns of t. That's what normally the eig command does, it normalizes these columns. But what's interesting is there are actually lots of ways that wc times wo can equal sigma squared without them being exactly equal to sigma. Let me give you an example. I could have uh, wc hat equals 2 sigma, and I could have wo hat equals 1 half sigma, and this expression would still be true, and this eigen decomposition would still be true, but I would have a t that's off by a scaling factor because these are not equal anymore. They're off by a factor of 4. Okay? So the last step, the main step, the, this is kind of the hands down the most important step, is multiplying my Gramians and computing the eigen decomposition, the eigenvectors. But there's this very important second step, which is now I have to scale these eigenvectors to get these to be exactly equal to each other. Okay? Uh, and I'm just going to kind of give you the punchline. You can work through all of the math. In fact, this is um, this is in chapter nine of the, the book on data-driven um, modeling that we just, we just wrote, myself and Nathan Kutz. And so you can go and verify all of the details, uh, either yourself or in that book. I'm just going to give you the punchline. OK, so the punchline is, let's say that I have, let's say that I call this my unscaled eigenvectors. OK, so my t sub u is just my unscaled eigenvectors that come out of, uh, out of the MATLAB command. And I'm going to have to find a scaling that makes these exactly equal to each other. So in those unscaled coordinates, what I have is t u inverse w c t u minus star is this new hat Gramian. Let's call that, it's going to be diagonal, but it doesn't have to equal the observability. It's going to be sigma control. Similarly, I'm going to have t u observability Gramian, t u, there's a star here is going to equal sigma O. And remember, these are both diagonal, but they might be, this might be four times bigger than that one, or four times smaller, or whatever. And I'm trying to now scale this t so that these are equal to sigma. Their product is still sigma squared, but I want them to both be equal to sigma. So I get to scale these eigenvectors to do that. Now, so the, the punchline, this is, you can verify this yourself, but the, the punchline is that there's this sigma s which is sigma control to the 1 fourth times sigma observable to the 1 fourth uh, minus. Okay? And if I take t equals my unscaled t times sigma s, then if I do this in those t coordinates, I get uh, wc hat equals wo hat equals sigma. They're equal to each other. There's no scaling. This one isn't four times smaller than that or three times smaller or whatever. They're really equal, and their product still equals sigma squared. OK. I want to recap. Most important thing. Most important thing, there is a coordinate transformation t that takes my controllability and observability Gramian and makes them equal and diagonal. And it's given by this eigen decomposition of their product, which is amazing. Okay, You can compute this in MATLAB pretty easily. 
Now, if I naively do this, there's lots of T matrices. There's lots of scalings of these eigenvectors T that will give me controllability and observability Gramians whose product is sigma squared, but they're off by a scaling. So I have to rescale my eigenvectors using the sigma s, which is some funky quarter power of blah, 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 whatever. It's just a rescaling of these columns of t, <clears throat> and then I get these to be exactly equal and um, diagonal. And then what's really cool is if I have this equal and diagonal t matrix here, t, okay, the first column is the most controllable state direction and the most observable. It's the most jointly controllable and observable state direction. The second one is the second most. And essentially what I can do is if I want a, a model reduction, I can chop off all but the first, let's say, five columns of T. And now I have a model in terms of five variables that captures, it's guaranteed to capture most of that input-output energy. Okay. That's really cool. So that's where we're going to go next. We're going to use this. This is called the balancing transformation. Really important. This is the balancing transformation. And what we're going to do next, uh, two things. I'm going to code this up in MATLAB, and I'm going to convince you that there's no magic. This all works, and we can get these eigen decompositions, and we can do this balancing transformation. So we're going to do a MATLAB example. This is going to become a plot. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to use this balancing transformation. This is a square matrix. And we're going to truncate all but the first R columns to get a reduced order model over here. Okay, That's what Moore did. That's what we're going to do. Uh, that's all coming up next. Thank you.